season of NASCAR competition, worrying about how you do in the point standings goes away during this time of the year. Tonight offers a chance to relax, cut loose, but more importantly have some fun. But this time around Thunder Valley, as for the first time in NASCAR history, NASCAR's best will tackle on the last great Coliseum to see who will take home one million dollars. Welcome to MDK Race Day as we get you set and ready for the 2020 NASCAR All-Star Race from Bristol. And welcome to the MDK Race Day Show. My name is Jed. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to sit down and allow me to fill you in on everything you need to know for tonight's NASCAR All-Star Race from the Bristol Motor Speedway. We have a lot of new things coming into this race, so hopefully I get you filled in with everything you need to know. So first off, let's take a look at what is new. And a lot of new things have been added to add a little bit of flair to the All-Star Race with the addition of moving it to Bristol Motor Speedway. So here's four things that are new coming into tonight's All-Star our race. The first thing, and probably the most notably, is the movement from Charlotte, which was originally the All-Star Race supposed to take place, to now Bristol. And that is for the first time since 1986 back in Atlanta that the All-Star Race has hosted a track other than Charlotte. NASCAR also announced that they'll be using a modified number placement in which the number is going to be a bit smaller and move a little bit to the right or a little bit closer to the rear wheels, while the sponsor, which is located usually on the top top of the rear wheels has now been moved to the left side or at least next to the number right next to the right side of the front wheels. Uh, it's going to be a bit different change. There have been a lot of good paint schemes but also a lot of horrific paint schemes. NASCAR also announced that this is the first time in its history that the All-Star Race will include a choose cone. So this is going to be during the one to go sign. Drivers that want to go onto the top lane, they can either stay up top or if a driver wants to take the bottom lane, they can move up and go to the bottom lane. Should provide some very interesting strategies and pretty fun restarts. And finally, NASCAR announced that they will feature and underglow lighting for the locked in race cars. For example, if you guys tune into the NASCAR Nashville burnouts uh, during uh, the uh, award ceremony last December, all the race cars that did the burnouts had underglow lighting, more specifically with the Chip Ganassi cars of Kyle Larson and Kurt Busch. They had lighting underneath the race cars while they were doing the burnouts. Well, for the all-star race, all locked in drivers will have underglow lighting under their race car. So this is gonna look really cool uh, to see how will that work? Because, and possibly if that could be used for future races, maybe to indicate, you know, let's say if a driver's one lap down, do they change underglow lighting from, let's say green if they're on the lead lap to now yellow if they're lap down, who knows? But I love these new experiments that NASCAR is doing besides the uh, modified and number placement. Outside of that, love the changes to add a bit of flair to make the all-star race interesting to watch because I feel like the all-star race has been very bland. You know, it's been the same thing year after year after year. NASCAR adding all these new changes to it, it should make the All-Star Race, at least for this year, must watch. Now, Sunday's race at Kentucky was atrocious. I think all of us can agree on that. However, it did provide two incredible laps of racing. A four-wide battle between Martin Trix Jr., Kevin Harvick, Ryan Blaney, and Cole Custer, with the rookie in Custer, going to victory lane for the first time in his career. Now, with that win, it locks Custer into NASCAR's playoffs and has ultimately changed the playoff grid dramatically. So here's a look at the grid with nine races to go before the playoffs begin. So Kevin Harvick right now has a top spot with 22 playoff points. He'll get another 10 bonus points if the playoffs were to begin right now. Denny Hamlin, Brad Kozlowski, Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Martrick Jr., Alex Bowman, and now the newly added Cole Custer. Those other eight drivers will also be logged in due to having wins. Eric Amarola is the highest driver without a win. 116 point cushion after a really good run at Kentucky. Earns two playoff points there. 11th and 12th are the Bush brothers, Kurt and Kyle, respectively, 104 points above for Kurt, while 89 points for Kyle. Matt Benedetto from a strong third place run is now 13th in the standing, 68 points above. Clint Boyer and William Byron, two drivers with two playoff points apiece, sits 14th and 15th respectively, with Byron's teammate Jimmy Johnson holds the final spot, 16th, 24 points ahead of Austin Dillon, alongside with teammate Tyler Reddick, who is 41 points behind, Eric Jones is 42 points behind and 19th, and Bubba Wallace rounds out the playoff grid, 84 points behind 
in the 20th spot. Well, like I said, for this week, points are not on the line. However, with that win, that adds Cole Custer into the all-star race. So he does not have to worry about the open. And speaking of the open, let's take a look at the format for tonight's all-star open. Three stages, stage one, stage two, each 35 laps apiece with stage three being 15 laps. And the winner of each stage advances into the all-star race. With the all-star race, it consists of 2019 and 2020 Cup Series winners, the latest one being Cole Custer, All-Star Race winners, as well as former Cup Series champions. All-Star Open winners and also the fan vote winner will all advance into the All-Star Race. And here are the 21 drivers that will compete to try and lock themselves into the All-Star Race. Row 1 is four drivers of Michael McDowell, very strong on the short tracks, and to the outside of him is Eric Amarola, starting in second after a very strong Kentucky run. Chris Bell riding a 2-3 top 10 streak, and Ricky Stiles Jr. in the 47 car. Throw three has rookie Tyler Reddick in the eight car, and on the outside of him is Bubba Wallace, a former All-Star Open winner. Row four has William Byron and Chris Buescher, both former Xfinity Series champions. And running out the top 10 is Clint Boyer and Matt Benedetto. Row six has a couple of Chevrolets, Austin Dillon on the inside lane and Ryan Priest on the outside. Row seven has JJ Yaley and Garrett Smithley. Row eight has Brendan Poole, another rookie, as well well as Quinn Howth on the outside of him. Row 9 has Joey Gase and former Xfinity champion Daniel Suarez. Row 10 has John Hermimichek, the final rookie in the field, and Ty Dillon, and rounding out the field is Corey LaJoy. So those are the drivers that are trying to race their way into the All-Star Open. The All-Star Race has a different race format, so let's take a look at that. The All-Star Race has four stages. Stage 1 is 55 laps, with Stage 2 and Stage 3 35 laps apiece, with Stage 4 being 15 laps. And the Key note there, the final stage will only have green flag laps. Now let's take a look at right now the 16 confirmed drivers that will try and fight for one million dollars for the first time around Thunder Valley in the all-star race. Randomly selected on pole Martin Triggs Jr., the number 19 car, and to the outside of him is Alex Bowman, the Fontana winner. Row two has Ryan Blaine, the Talladega winner, and Justin Haley starts in the fourth spot. He got into the all-star race after winning a rain shortened Daytona race back in July. Kevin Harvick, the hottest driver right now in NASCAR, sits in fifth place and to the outside of him is former cup series champion matt kenseth row four has former cup champion kirk bush in 2004 and to the outside of him is nascar's newest first time winner in cole custer he starts in the eighth spot and around the top five is former cup champions brad kislowski and the defending cup champion in kyle bush row six has the 2002 winner of the all-star race ryan newman and the 2018 nascar cup champion in joy logano row seven has chase elliott and four-time all-star race winner competing in his final all-star race jimmy johnson and rounding out the last row or at least the last confirmed row in row a is denny hamlin and teammate eric jones while row nine and row ten is reserved for the stage winners stage one stage two and stage three and finally the nascar fan vote winner will round out the 20 car field now i'm gonna guess my picks and predictions of what can we expect in this all-star race well if it's gonna be anything similar to how the racing was earlier in july no in june i should say when we were at Bristol for an actual race with the Food CD 500, I think it's going to be nothing but pure, fantastic racing. Specifically, Under the Lights, a million dollars on the line, classic short track racing, new uh, experiments with the Choose Cone and well, the Underglow lighting is not really an addition that can affect the race, but I, sh but I believe this Underglow lighting would improve the fan experience. But I'm very interested on this choose cone on how this could predict or how this will play out in terms of strategy. You know, do you want to risk maybe going to the outside lane or going to the inside lane? Who knows? We could have the similar, you know, two by two, eight rows deep, or we could have a certain situation where you have only one driver that goes from ninth to first because everyone else takes the outside lane. You decide, you know what? I'm going to take the inside lane. You're going to see a lot of drivers make a lot of risk, a lot of strategy calls to try and get track position because at the end of the day, that's still very important in nascar in 2020 uh but ultimately i think is going to be one one exciting night not i don't know i don't want to say one hot night but it could get very hot who knows uh, what's gonna happen now i want to talk about some drivers i think you might need to look out for both in the open and the all-star race in the open 
I think yeah, look at Michael McDowell. A lot of people overlook at him. Maybe oh, Michael McDowell. Nah, he's not going to be a player. Michael McDowell. He's he's got some good runs. He runs really good on the road courses, and he can run pretty good on the short tracks. Front Row Motorsports as a team has stepped up tremendously in speed. Both McDowell and Nemechek. So don't don't look over Michael McDowell just because he's on pole uh, and just because he's not a top contender. I expect him to at least put up a fight. Eric Amarola on the outside of him, he's obviously going to have a role in this. I think he has been the second best. Um, even with Cole Custer's win, Eric Amarola has easily been the second best driver at SHR. He's put up some really good runs as of recent weeks, so I shouldn't expect nothing less here uh, tonight. As well as Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell, he has one at Bristol, I believe, in the Xfinity side. Starts third has put up some really good runs. Top 10 finishes in recent weeks. I think he's also going to put up a fight. Bubba Wallace, a former winner in the All-Star Open, and he also runs really good at Bristol. Uh, he had a really good run back in 2018 where he even took the lead from Brad Kozlowski and Kyle Busch. There's a lot of good contenders in this race, and that's a good thing I love. Uh, one of the things I love about Bristol is the fact that it's more of a driver's track, not really aero. So unlike a track like at Charlotte, where uh, the All-Star race was last year, where really only five drivers had a shot at winning, I'm looking at this field, I see pff, really 10, 11 drivers. M McDowell, Amarola, Bell, Ricky Stenhouse, that's another driver. He runs, runs really, really well at Bristol. He's going to be a factor. Tyler Reddick, he has put up some good runs lately, has speed. Bubba Wallace, he runs good on the on the, uh, on the the Oval. William Byron, he runs really good. Busher, a former Xfinity champion. Clint Boyer, Matt Benedetto. Matt Benedetto nearly won at Bristol last fall. Again, there's a good 10 to 12 drivers that have a shot at advancing into the all-star race and that's i think the open is going to be really exciting to watch i'll even go to extend as maybe even more than the all-star race because with the open it's very short very quick races three stages 35 laps a piece it's going to be very fun to watch to see the drivers just try and fight their way just to get into the all-star race again look back at last year the drivers and what they had to do just to make it into the all-star race Bubba Wallace and William Byron Bubba Wallace and Dana Suarez the battles that they had just to get into the all-star race it is going to be I think one of the most exciting parts of the entire night now the all-star race on the other hand I really don't know um I will say I I highly doubt you're gonna see Justin Haley have be a factor in it I know he's sitting in fourth place and I know I just said that Bristol's more of a driver's track but it's Spire Motorsports at the end of the day and I don't think it doesn't matter how big of a driver's track Bristol is you're still going to need good equipment at least in NASCAR nowadays and I don't think Haley is going to be a factor but uh, Martrex Jr. you know the Toyotas are going to be fast as well as the Chevrolet drivers I expect Bowman Johnson Bowman uh, Johnson had a really good car I feel like uh, Bowman as well Chase Elliott was in the mix for the win between him and Joe Logano that's another thing I should mention Logano and Elliott those two have had a, I don't think their rivalry has sort of gone away, but it's sort of taken a back seat. Don't be surprised if you see at least Elliott try and maybe push the envelope just a little bit on Logano in this race. Because at the end of the day, this is just for fun. There's no points involved. So you're gonna see a lot of drivers making a lot more aggressive moves and potentially cause some sparks and cause some wrecks. But it might be havoc for drivers, it's gonna be a joy for us as fans to watch. So I'm not gonna announce a winner of the all-star race just yet, mainly because I want I we really need to know the other four drivers that are gonna lock themselves into the all-star race before we can determine a winner. Because it has been known in the past for the all-star open winner to also win the all-star race. Now I might be planning on doing a live reaction, mainly because I was supposed to go to Bristol, but I decided to back out mainly because me being from Florida. I just did not feel comfortable going to a Florida airport, mainly because, I mean, if you've seen how bad we are, uh, mainly because of our governor, <clears throat> but um, <laughs> our cases are more than Europe combined. Yeah, I don't feel safe leaving my house. Uh, so I decided to pull out of the Bristol race. I know a bunch of YouTubers are gonna be there, Black Lives Matter, Danny B, J uh, The Iceberg, Eric Eastup, hope they have a very fun and very safe time. Uh, and for anyone else that's going, hope all of you also have a very fun and very safe time. And for the love of God, please wear your mask. It's simple, very simple. You put it on, boom, there, done, that's it. Anyways, I'm done. I might do a live reaction stream. 
um, later tonight, so be on the lookout for that because I still I feel this is going to be a very exciting race. A lot of unpredictable stuff I think is going to take place here tonight, so I want to be able to uh, put a, a live reaction so you guys can watch the race with me. Again, not confirmed, but we're going to try my best to do so. Uh, but yeah, that's it for me. Tell me what you guys thoughts on the all-star race Who are the drivers you're looking for and who are the drivers you think are gonna lock themselves into the all-star race? Tell me in the comment section down below, but until next time my name is Chick Carlson MDK and I'll see you guys next time